Hi, Ben here and welcome back to the workshop. And today we thought we'd show you a little bit about uh, preparing tool steels, particular tool steels for heat treatment. So I've got some uh, RWL34 Woodlander blades here. And you can't just simply pop them in the kiln like you would with O1 tool steel or other carbon tool steels. They're a little bit more complicated in the actual heat treatment. And we need to protect them um, from oxygen. Basically, when we're running these for quenching, we have to take them up to like 1080 degrees Celsius. And at those temperatures, this steel doesn't particularly react nicely with the oxygen uh, in the air. So we have to protect them from the oxygen and stop the carbon and everything just like burning up in the steel. So we're gonna put a protective environment on that steel. So there is different methods of protecting it from the oxygen. So if you were producing tool steels uh, or making knives or other tooling on a commercial level, some people would send it off for heat treatment to specialist companies and they'd actually run them in a what they call a vacuum kiln so where they take all the oxygen out of the actual kiln itself when it's up those up to those temperatures another method that you can use is to actually use what they call salt bath kilns so that's actually a big sort of molten pot of salt and the blade is dipped into that liquid almost like a miniature volcano and obviously because it's in that liquid salt it can't react with the oxygen uh, another method is you can purge your kiln with argon or other inert gases to take all the oxygen out of the kiln so that again the steel won't react with that with that oxygen that's in there for us in our sort of environment and with the kilns that is available to the knife maker one of the easiest ways to do it is to actually use what we call um, this it's called tool wrap basically it's very very thin stainless steel that we create pockets or envelopes that we're gonna seal the knife blades or the tools up in, and that will protect it from the oxygen when it's up at those high temperatures. So the tool wrap itself, you can buy it in just literal sheets like that. I tend to buy it in a great big roll, because obviously I make lots of different size tools, so I tend to cut this to the particular size that I need. As simple as it sounds, I've actually got like a little wooden pattern that I've got the relevant sizes for the particular tools that I need to heat treat. Um, and we thought it'd be a good way to just show you how we go about preparing one of those tool wraps, preparing one of these blades ready for heat treat. And a few of the little sort of top tips that I've found out over the years. Now the one thing to say when you are cutting this foil, I've found the easiest way to cut it is with some big shears. These are really old uh, dressmaker's scissors that I got from a car boot sale that were all rusty. Uh, but I've sharpened them up and they cut the foil really nicely. You could use a pair of tin snips, something like that, but because it is so thin and so flexible, you've got to be really careful because it will it will cut you. Um, some people wear gloves. I find that it's just a bit more awkward wearing gloves, so I just sort of prepare myself for a few little nicks, um, but most of the time I'm pretty careful. Now, before I wrap them in the, in the heat treat foil, um, I've actually run what we call a stress relief cycle on these. So these are prepared blades I've done all the profiling, I've drilled all the holes, I've countersunk all the holes, and then I've got what I call a preheat treat bevel on there. So it's still thick, but obviously it's just had the corners knocked off. And obviously if you want to do any sign of marking or stamp your logo or anything like that, you could do that before this next stage. But these have then gone through what we call a stress relief cycle. So you heat them up to about 650 degrees C for an hour, bring them out, let them air cool, and that relieves any kind of stress that's been induced into the steel while you've been manufacturing it. Um, I've already cut a few strips of this to my size that I know will suit my, my Woodlander blades. And I find that working on a really nice flat uh, surface helps a lot as well. So this is a real, real cheapo uh, marble chopping block that I got from a, a shop. And I find that that works really nicely so that we can keep this foil nice and flat. You want to avoid putting any wrinkles in it or any holes so make sure you're working on a clean desk don't make sure you've got no grinding grit that's going to puncture holes in this in this foil now obviously we're going to show you how to do RWL34 but this is relevant for any of the high alloy steel so ABL uh, uh, 12C27 any of those high temperature alloy steels that are going to go up to those kind of level of, of, of temperatures when you're hardening now some people will even wrap simple 
tool steels in it because they find that protecting it from the oxygen will prevent decarb but it's quite an expensive thing to do to buy the foil is expensive and obviously it's quite time consuming so unless you really need to I, I probably wouldn't bother it with the with the O1. Now first thing I want to do is I'm going to fold it in half so like I say careful of those edges fold that so that you can create a nice sharp fold and I just sort of squeeze my fingers along it to create a nice clean fold along there. You can get these little uh, little rollers. These are actually designed for wallpapering and things like that. This one's got a bit of a squeak on it, but that works quite nicely for creating those sharp folds. And then the next stage I wanna do is I'm gonna seal the ends of this packet. Now, um, you can actually buy these pre-made as pre-welded packets. It certainly means that they've got a really tight seal, so no oxygen can get in there, but they are relatively expensive, and obviously you've got to buy different sizes for different tools. So having it this way and making your own, it's pretty simple, really. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a fold. So what I tend to do is use this chopping block, and this is why I like it, because it creates these nice sharp square corners. And I'm going to fold over approximately sort of 8 to 10 mil, something like that. So just bend it along that corner, and then I flip it over. And I just fold it down with my fingers again. Same scenario, at this stage you could use your roller or you can even just use a, a nice flat hammer. And then I want to actually put at least two folds. Some people will do two, some people will do three. I find that if you just do two folds but make sure that they're really nice and neat with no creases in it along that edge, there isn't going to be a lot of oxygen getting in there. Like so. Now what I tend to do now, because I know that I'm going to slip one of my woodlanders in there, what I'll tend to do now is actually seal this long edge next. And then we can just create a nice little envelope. So again, lay it on that edge, line it up, try and keep it as neat as possible. I, mean, I know it sounds pedantic, but if you keep it nice and neat, you're going to end up with really nice, neat, crisp folds. And you're trying to make sure that none of that, that oxygen gets in there. So take your time and it's, you'll end up with a tidy job then. So fold it over. Again, watch out for those little ragged edges. Squeeze that along. I know a few of you viewers will probably be hoping to see me cut myself just to prove myself wrong. But uh, as long as you're careful, you should be fine. So that's the first fold. And if you sort of push it up against that, that chopping block, you'll find that that fold will actually show you where it is. You'll feel it click on the edge and then you know that you're you're just going to fold it over again, just like so. And before I put the knife in, that's normally when I'll, where you get that big build up, because obviously you've got a fold on top of a fold, it's hard to push it down and seal it. So you can just carefully hammer it down. It's up to you whether you use a roller or a hammer, or some people even use like, uh, like sheet metal tools like pliers to squeeze it down but I find that that works pretty good. So that's created our envelope and what I tend to do is I get one of my uh, little helpers in the workshop to do some mundane tasks and I get them to cut and fold them so I don't have to do that every time. I can just come up when I need to grab an envelope. Now the only other thing that I've found that works well with this is this high temperature foil sometimes at those temperatures if you've got a very smooth blade you'll find that it'll almost weld the foil to the to the knife blade. So to prevent that, I just use a bit of talcum powder. It doesn't have to be a known brand. The cheaper the better, really, because all you're doing is just creating a little barrier to prevent that blade sticking to the foil. But the powder works really nicely. So I just tend to wipe that on there. So it's got a good coating on there. And again, just to try and keep consistency, I tend to always lay it so the back edge of the knife is going along that, that first fold, so the cutting edge is up where we've actually folded it over. I don't know why, it's just that when I load the kiln I know that that's how it will be, so when I'm pulling it out I, I know that this is basically where the cutting edge is, because we want to try and prevent the tip or anything like that poking through the foil. Now to help that slide in there, and again like I said we don't want to make any holes in there, I've got this very high tech a uh, stick that I've whittled so that it's almost like a long uh, lollipop stick. And I'm just going to slide that in there 
just to create a bit of an opening so that when I slide the knife blade in there, I'm not gonna puncture the, the foil. And I tend to slide it with the, the butt end of the knife in first. And I just tap it down. And we wanna make sure that it goes into the packet. Now, I've made sure that when I've worked out my measurements that I've got spare material here. I don't want these folds to be right up against my knife blade because that can affect when we actually do the quench. So I want about an inch of spare material at either end. So that's feeling pretty good. And then I just tap it so I now can feel where the blade is in the packet and I can feel that that back edge of the knife blade is sat nicely along that spine. So when we load them in the kiln, that will be sat at the very back, bottom of the kiln so it's nice and straight. And then the important bit now is to try and get as much of that air out as possible. So I squeeze the foil flat. And at this stage, some people will even drop a piece of uh, kitchen roll, a tiny little bit of matchstick, uh, some kind of material that will combust when it comes up to temperature and remove any oxygen that's in the packet. I've had mixed results with that. Sometimes I've found that it will discolor the blade. Sometimes I've found if you've used a piece of wood and it's sort of fallen underneath the knife blade, when you come to quench it, you can actually distort the blade. So I've actually found with using the powder, the talcum powder, there's enough of that sort of burn up that it will burn out any oxygen that's in the packet and it will also prevent the packet from sticking to the blade. And it's so fine that it's not gonna distort your blade when you actually come to the quench. So. I try and keep all my folds on the same side as well. So I'll lay that back onto the, the granite plate, squeeze as much air out as possible, line up that end so we've got about another centimetre sticking over the edge, fold that over, and then we can do that double fold, just like so. Keep that nice and neat. And then we'll just hammer it shut. And I tend to just give it all a little bit of a tap around the edge. And you can see why I tend to leave that spare material on the actual packet. If that fold had been really close up to that tip, you can see that it's starting to bend the foil, but it hasn't punctured a hole in it. Um, and that's, that's the important thing. So that's pretty much the packet prepared. Obviously I'd do maybe six or seven blades in each time I run the kiln. But so I don't get confused, because now that blade's in there, you aren't going to tell what's in that packet. And obviously you have different temperatures to reach for different steels. So just so my, my aging brain can remember, I normally write what's on, what, what blade steel is in the packet. So obviously if I'm running multiple steels at a time, I can put the relevant blades in the right temperature kiln. So that's, that's pretty much it. So that's how we prepare the foil packets for heat treating, RWL34, AEBL, even uh, CPM154, anything like that. Um, so that's how you get them ready for the kiln. So maybe another video what we'll do is actually show you how we actually heat treat the steel. But hopefully that will help all the budding knife makers out there how to actually prepare that foil. A little bit simple, but yeah, look, no blood. So if you're careful, you should be fine. And you've probably noticed as well that I've got a slightly different uh, look at the moment. So when you're in uh, sort of uh, lockdown, you, you're having to cut your own hair. So this is my uh, new look. So hopefully you'll like it. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoy seeing what we were on in the workshop and hope you're all staying safe. So tune in next time for more knife making top tips.